What's going on, everybody? Mitch here back with another 45 Drives Tech Tip. Wow, it's been a while since I've actually said that. I've uh, been able to do a real tech tip here, so I'm excited. So today, what we're gonna be talking about is a feature comparison of VMware and some of the things they offer and their equivalent in Proxmox. So the ones that we're gonna talk about specifically today are vCenter, vSphere, vSAN, and also vMotion and VMware HA. So if you don't know what any of those mean, don't worry, we're gonna fill you in. But the really important part is we're gonna talk about what they are and what they do, and then we're gonna show the equivalent in Proxmox. So it's a little bit of a hands-on video as well. So stay tuned, let's get into it. All right, so to get started, I guess it's best to explain what VMware and Proxmox is first, right? So ESXi, or vSphere, as the, the clustering version of that is, is a hypervisor. So a hypervisor is a virtualization platform where you can deploy machines in a virtual manner where you essentially get more bang for your buck. You can deploy many different uh, machines, all from a single unified host or multiple hosts in a clustered fashion. So Proxmox is an open source version of this. So Proxmox virtual environment is all also a hypervisor. However, this is a fully open source solution based on KVM, so kernel virtual, virtual machine, so a Linux uh, hypervisor, as well as LXC for its containerization. So that is all native to Proxmox VE. Whereas ESXi, especially now these days, ESXi, VMware, vSphere, uh, don't even have a free version as of uh, very, very soon. So unfortunately, uh, very, very hard to get your hands on just as a, as a tinkerer or as someone that wants to learn. So what these two hypervisors offer is a lot of different features, and we're gonna go into some of them. We're gonna first talk about the ESXi VMware vSphere versions, and then we're gonna show their equivalent on screen in a Proxmox cluster environment. So the first one I wanna talk about is vCenter. So what vCenter is, is a, essentially a single pane of glass uh, management layer for your vSphere cluster, for your ESXi vSphere cluster. So let's say you have three or five or seven uh, ESXi nodes. To manage them through a single UI, you will use a vCenter. So of course, this is an additional license. Uh, so you bought your vSphere license, of course, which gives you your hypervisors. And now you also have to purchase a vCenter license. So I'm not gonna talk about the prices. I actually don't know the prices. They definitely differ from how many CPUs, how many cores, et cetera. Um, so that's that. So that gives you the ability to manage it. Uh, the comparison or the equivalent within Proxmox, which is fully enabled out of the box, just from Proxmox's website, fully open source, is just Proxmox Virtual Environment Cluster Manager. So it's the same UI, whether it's one node or 10 nodes, it's all managed from the same single pane of glass. The next one we're going to talk about is vSAN. So vSAN is a really interesting one. So thing to know up front about VMware ESXi is it doesn't have any local or native storage up front. So if you wanted to do software RAID of some kind on your hypervisor, uh, co-located, there is nothing there. You, you have to actually put in a hardware RAID card, build your hardware RAID through its BIOS, and then pass it through to VMware ESXi. Obviously, this doesn't support clustering, however. So if you do want native cluster storage through VMware, you either roll your own storage separate and then pass it through via iSCSI, NVMe over Fabric, NFS, something like that, or you purchase vSAN. So what vSAN is, is a clustered storage solution on the actual ESXi VMware nodes themselves. So this is built in to the vSphere hypervisor and the storage is HA between those nodes. So what does Proxmox offer in its place? That is a really cool one, something that if you watch 45 drives off, I'm sure you've heard a lot, and that's Ceph. So Ceph, uh, a Proxmox team adopted Ceph some years ago, and it is now very easy to deploy, build, have a hyper-converged Ceph and Proxmox cluster all through in a single UI, which is fantastic. It also offers lots of uh, onboard software-defined RAIDs as well if you don't want to do clustering. So you can do ZFS, you can do Linux RAID, MDADM, you can do LVM striping. Essentially, anything that exists in Linux, you can do uh, through Proxmox. So there's tons of options there. 
Next, we get to vMotion and VMware HA. So these are actually not dedicated licenses like vSAN is and like vSphere is. These two features are part of your vSphere license. I know it gets pretty complex, right? Uh, I think they might do that on purpose. So v, uh, vMotion is the act or the ability to live migrate your v VMs from one host to another host without any downtime. So it'll essentially download the RAM, dump the RAM to another host, and then migrate that disk over to the other host without any downtime for the actual machine. And what's Proxmox is a feature, uh, a comparison for this? Well, that is just the Proxmox HA Manager. And that allows for live migration of your VMs. Again, of course, no licenses. You click, select where you want to VM migrate your VM, choose if you want it online, and your VM migrates uh, without any downtime whatsoever. Now, the other feature I talked about was VMware HA. And this is the ability to have your VMs be highly available in the event of one of your VMware nodes failing. So let's say one of your vSphere ESXi nodes, the power rips out of that somehow. Uh, all of the VMs that were deployed on that, you want to be able to have them spin up on another node as quickly as possible. So again, Proxmox's comparison to this is uh, spoiler alert, Proxmox high availability. So you can create HA groups in Proxmox, which is really cool. So let's say you want this VM to only be able to fail over between node one, three, five, and seven. Well, you can do that very easily, or you could say, I want this VM to be able to migrate between all nodes. We're gonna show that off really soon. So those are the big features that we wanna talk about today. I'm gonna tease one at the very, very end, but I'm gonna save it till the act we actually show, uh, and then we'll go from there. So let's dive into the computer and let's take a look at these features. So before we get started, I just want to show off the Proxmox UI, and this is a perfect time. So here are the feature comparison that we're going to do. Oh, we've got that spoiler. You can see number four, we got a tease for a future video, and this is Proxmox Software Defined Networking, and we're going to use that as a comparison to a feature within vSphere called NSXT Data Center. Uh, this is a really fully featured um, set of tools to let you do some really complex networking, but we'll leave it at that for now. So first, Proxmox VE Cluster Manager. Let's take a look through the Proxmox UI and get a feel for what this cluster is. So we can see here, we have a cluster called Proxy Moxie. That would be my doing. Uh, and we have three different Proxmox hosts within this single pane of glass. So a three node Proxmox cluster. We can see we have several VMs running on Proxmox host one, several on two, and several on three. So this is our cluster manager. This is the vCenter equivalent uh, of Proxmox. So this allows you to do everything you would expect in a normal clustered hypervisor solution, such as view your VMs. You can see the uh, stats, the usage of those VMs. You can even click on console and get a UI pane right into the VM itself. We can see that here. So if this was a Windows VM, you would get your Windows UI. But since these are all uh, Linux VMs, we have our command line since they are just server VMs. Um, we can also check our hardware out, change our hardware around, increase the resources if we need to, add additional disks, all that stuff. Back up, so this is really cool. If we go and we take a look, so this um, VM is actually being backed up by a dedicated piece of software, again, that Proxmox builds, called Proxmox Backup Server. This piece of software, I cannot tell you how amazing this thing is. So what we can do, since we see here we have a backup of this VM, we can actually do individual file restores right from within the, the Proxmox UI. We don't have to go over to the Proxmox backup server UI, which it does have a UI. We can go right here and we can see all of our backups. And not only that, we can restore, or if it's just a single file we want to get back, click on file restore and take a look at this. It'll mount that file system live for us. We get a look here, and there is all of our uh, folders of our root file system within Linux. So very, very cool stuff there. So yeah, lots of great stuff. This is essentially the equivalent of what you would have in a vCenter, vSphere environment. Uh, and we'll kind of stop there for now. So going back to our next set of features, we can see we have hyperconverge Ceph or even potentially ZFS as a comparison to vSAN. So as I mentioned, uh, Proxmox adopted Ceph, which is so amazing. Obviously, we love Ceph here. Um, but if you don't want to deploy Ceph, well, you can do a sort of pseudo HA with ZFS. And what I mean by that is you can deploy local ZFS arrays on each of your servers, and then you could have Proxmox do snapshot and ZFS send receive between them all. It's not completely one-to-one -one 
synchronous uh, replication like Ceph would be because it is a cluster, but it does get you fairly close. If a VM or a host dies, uh, the, the, the backup or the second copy that's on another node is fairly close within typically five minutes of each other. Uh, but if you need true HAA 999 uh, plus uh, three nines plus of availability, then you're going to definitely want to deploy Ceph or some other type of HA storage on the back end. doesn't have to be hyper-converged. So if we take a look here, we can see at our data center level, we go to the storage and we can see we have RBD, which is Ceph's block storage, as our storage. But we can actually see in, in brackets that it's PVE, which means the Ceph cluster is not a separate Ceph cluster. It's running right on these nodes hyperconverged. How do we know that? Well, we can go to the Ceph tab and we can actually get some status on our Ceph cluster. We can see we are in a health OK state. We've got 96 NVMe OST, so quite a beefy host. Uh, or a beefy cluster rather. And then if we click on the individual hosts themselves and go down to Ceph, we can actually see what duties each of these nodes are doing. So we can see in this case, we only have a single monitor. Wouldn't do that in production, of course. But this NVMe Prox1 is a monitor. We can see below our managers are one, two, and three as well. So all these services are being hosted hyperconverged. Click on the OSDs. We can see all the OSDs that each host is actually hosting. So very, very cool stuff. And this is all, again, free, open source, no licensing, uh, like you would have to do with, with other environments. Okay, so that's really, really cool. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. So Proxmox HA Manager, live migration uh, as a comparison to vMotion and VMware HA. So what we can do, let's go back up to our data center level, and we can see here under the HA tab that I have a few VMs that are being managed under HA. So if we look at our groups, we have one group selected, but we could have multiple of these. We can see where our name is called HA Group 1, and they're all set to one priority, which means I don't want to have one, prior, one node have a priority over the other for these specific VMs. Any host that you can go to, you can have fun, go there. But you can configure this very granularly for your own needs. So for example, if I wanted to add another host to this HA Group, or sorry, another VM to this HA Group, I could come down, I'd click on this one, for example, or sorry, I would go up to my HA and I would click on my HA and I would add a new resource. So we can see all the running VMs here that are not in a HA group. So let's say I wanted to add Rocky 7 to my HA group. I select how many times would I like it to try to restart itself? How many times should it relocate in the event of a HA event? And then when it fails over, do I want it to start automatically or not? And in this case I would. And then you select the group and it's as simple as that. And now if uh, we had a priority setup of where we wanted this host to go, it would then do a live migration, but because we didn't, it's not gonna migrate and we can see we're ready and it didn't move anywhere. Now, let's try a live migration. Let's take a look at a VM. Let's go something that's not in a HA group. So let's go to Rocky 15. Let's hop into the console here. Let's log in, okay. There we go. So let's go DF just to take a look at our file systems here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to migrate this from host three over to host two, and we're going to do it live so it doesn't have to reboot. It's completely in the exact same state uh, before we did the migration. So you click migrate. We can see the mode is online and we're moving it to Proxmox host two and click migrate and we wait. So what I will do is while this happens, I am going to click the X, see we can see the migrations happening. I'm gonna click it, and then we're going to wait for this to pop up over here. And there it goes, and look at that. We still have our DF up that we saw there. The VM did not have to reboot, no, nothing of the sort. Full live migration as we would expect. So really, really cool stuff there, guys, right? Um, now the last thing I'm gonna leave you with, and this is a video that we are definitely teasing for the near future, so this, cluster is very, very beefy. And I'm gonna show you just how beefy it is before we dump, dive into the uh, software-defined networking. So if we did a Ceph-S, we can see we have 96 NVMe OSDs in this thing. And if I also do an ETH tool on my Bond Zero, let's take a look at this network. We have a 400 gigabit port on every, or sorry, 400 gigabit LACP Bond on every single node in this cluster. So we have 400 gigabits of bandwidth between all the nodes and 96 NVMe. So you can see where we're going with that, right? There's, there's a lot of performance to be had on this little cluster. Now, would we recommend doing a 96 NVMe three node Ceph cluster if you have a lot of VMs to deploy? Probably not. You probably want to scale that out 
uh, quite a bit wider than, than just three very, very tall nodes. Uh, but I want to show just how much you can get out of a, a file out of a cluster that is as dense as this. Also, if, we, if you're curious about what CPU we're using, it is a Milan 64 core uh, CPU, 128 threads, so AMD Epic. And we can get that info here. We can see it's a 7113P, uh, just for anyone that may have been curious. So with that being said, we have some really, really powerful uh, networking, really, really powerful uh, Ceph cluster. And if we take a pop all the way down, let me go to our data center one last time, we can see we have something called software defined networking. So this gives us the ability to do some really, really complex, advanced things with our networking. Uh, as is expected in a, in a virtualized environment, you may have the need for a lot of different VLANs, a lot of different co configurations, BGP routing, Q and Q, all kinds of crazy things, right? So if we take a look here, we have the ability to do a VLAN, Q and do, Q, and Q, VXLAN. So if you've ever heard of VXRail, this is the open source equivalent of that. Uh, it gives us the ability to have multiple layer two networks all stitched together as essentially they look like they're on one single layer two, which they are definitely not. They could be going over a WAN things like that. So we got a lot of really cool tools here. We have eVPN, so you can configure and set all this up through Proxmox UI. Uh, we can see our VM nets here and additional options. So you can add IPAM, even a power DNS, uh, BGP here. So lots of really cool things. We're gonna definitely have a video coming in the future to show off some of this software defined networking and how powerful it is within a Proxmox context. All right, guys, so that was just a very, very brief rundown of all of these features that we talked about today. Um, a little bit of jump into the UI so you could get a feel for what it is. But we want to know, what are you guys interested in seeing? We've got some really beefy hardware here, obviously. Uh, we're experts on Proxmox, experts on Ceph here. So what specifically would you like to see that you are curious about that you're not getting anywhere else, that no one else seems to be talking about? Because we'd love to be the ones to share that and teach you. Now, with that being said, uh, look out for in the very near future for the software defined networking stuff. But with that being said, thanks for coming along for the ride, everybody, and we'll see you next time.